Hi, welcome to our live stream. Um, my name is Robert. I'm a technologist for Kansas for ITQ. And uh, I'm here with uh, Kelsey Hightower. Thank you for joining us. So uh, how's your, uh, your experience been so far the last few days at uh, Explore? Well, it's interesting because I've been in this Kubernetes space like since the beginning. So we're almost at that decade marker. And you would think everyone has heard of this stuff or at least has used it once. And the truth is that it's not the case. There are a lot of people here that were almost in ignore it mode, wait and see mode. But being at this conference and just seeing the type of content VMware is putting out, like Kubernetes is coming whether you like it or not. It's baked in by default. And so I think a lot of people in this community are starting to understand now I need to get on board. And they're asking that question, what does this mean for me? And what role they're going to play in that story going forward? Yeah. The, um one of the struggles that, uh, that this community might have, it's very infrastructure oriented. Of course, the developer space uh, can be scary. Um, it, it's, it's funny, um, many infrastructure people, they see Kubernetes as being a developer thing. And a lot of developers that are getting used to Kubernetes they see it as an infrastructure thing. So these two communities are pointing to each other. So what we're seeing now, and I think it's true for Google as well, is, um, is you need something in the middle. You need, um, you need people to bridge the gap between kind of you know, infrastructure ops and that developer experience. I'm seeing a lot of sessions that explore around the concept of platform teams and platform engineering. Um, we're seeing the narrative the last you know, six months or so, and also at KubeCon, that DevOps might be dead. Do you think DevOps is dead? No, but I do think people got real confused. You can't just say, all you all update your LinkedIn profiles with DevOps and we're good. That's not enough. The other thing I think there's a challenge is, like people say silos are bad. I think silos are bad when there's not an API in between the groups. You really do want a clear way to use whatever that group pretend or pertains to own. For example, if I'm providing you Kubernetes, don't just give me a raw Kubernetes API. What is the platform? Be honest, be very clear about what the expectation is. So I think DevOps isn't enough. I think that whole platform versus DevOps discussion is, if you're in a DevOps group, what is your API that you're exporting? Don't have your API just be JIRA tickets that someone gets assigned and then they process it and they update the ticket. That's not enough, even though that could be a very collaborative thing depending on how you deal with JIRA tickets. But what people really want is eliminate that whole flow. If your team is over the storage layer, what's the storage API? What's the command line tool that I can use that I can authenticate, have a quota to make sure that I don't use more than I need, and then just use the storage and then transparently your team has a roadmap, you're adding new storage protocols. I think that's the interaction that people want. So I think this is why that narrative around platform is becoming so powerful and becoming so loud nowadays. Yeah, Building a platform team can be a challenge. We see it with our customers. Uh, it's a skill set challenge, right? And especially if you're coming from infra, like a lot of people here at Explore are, um, this stuff can be scary, right? It's, it's, an, it's a new direction. You know, what kind of advice would you give to an infrastructure engineer who's you know, maybe only familiar with the vSphere ecosystem right now, um, moving in this, in this direction, what would you tell them? Why limit your toolbox? It literally doesn't make any sense. If you think about it traditionally, hardware and software go together actually. It's only when you bring in this, I'm only the operator, I only twist the knob. Like at home, you have a microwave, you only push the buttons. You don't know how microwaves work, you don't know the physics behind it, and honestly, you can get away with that, but you're just a consumer. You only do what that microwave allows you to do. That's not what companies need anymore. Companies actually need someone that look at the platforms that are available, right? So as an engineer, you have a tool bag. It's up to you as a professional to walk the lanes in the hardware store and see what's available and add the right things to your tool bag. And if you're at an organization, the goal is Based on all the tools available, VMware is one tool, virtualization is one tool, Kubernetes is one tool, but all we know right now is that there's always a gap. Right? Those tools take us so far and there's a gap. And what we've been doing for years, even in the infrastructure space, bash scripts count, in my opinion. Bash is code, it's a different dialect, it lets you do certain things. But then there's a point in time where bash scripts may not cut it. It may be far easier to use something like Python or Golang to interact with these API-driven services. So I think if you're an infrastructure person, you know what the gaps are. You already help the company paper over those gaps, whether it's manual processes, PowerShell. But I want you to do a step back and say, what should the API be? 
And then how would you automate it and ultimately stitch it together with the other areas that need to be glued together? So uh, to me is, you are a developer. You have to come to terms with that. And a developer's tool bag is much bigger than just one thing where people are asking you just to consume the technology. Now what I'm saying is, as a developer in that tool bag, the language of progress, the tools we use to fill the gap, they happen to be software. Just like the people who write kernels for hardware, those are infrastructure people too. But what good is infrastructure without the kernel? It doesn't work. And so I think if you take VMware or Kubernetes and that becomes your new kernel, I promise you someone's going to be responsible for the user land. So we're building these platforms usually for developers to, to consume it, to, to uh, push code to, hopefully without them having to worry too much about, about infrastructure. Um, but there's a higher purpose here. Uh, why are we doing microservice architectures? Why are we doing containers at all? Um, there's a lot of education still at the business side of this. You know, what is the, the added value? You know, where does Kubernetes play a part? You know, is it just a runtime? Is it more than that? What would your message be to IT leadership today who are seeing this kind of wave of containers and Kubernetes and these technologies coming at them? What kind of value can it mean to them? This is what happens when you don't have a roadmap. When you have a lot of people who just get hired to manage things, think about this for a moment. You're in a grocery store and you get hired to make sure that the grocery stores have all the right things on the shelves. You don't know how to cook. All you know is the cereal box goes here and this is the price. That's your whole world. And so you will just manage the grocery store. You will keep the aisles clean and then there will be people who actually know how to cook that will come in and they will say, hey, where's the salt? Where's the eggs? Because they are interested in baking a cake. Now, if you're paying attention, you may reorganize the store to make it easier for people who shop. You may be smart and put a recipe sign up to say, hey, all the ingredients for common things may need to be close together, even if it's redundant. We're going to put egg in two places, the place where all the cold stuff is, and we're going to put a small refrigerator next to the flour because we know the next thing you're going to buy is eggs. You can optimize, but most of us don't work that way. Why? Because we don't understand why we're in the grocery store in the first place. So I think as a platform engineer, the observation should be, what experience are we trying to provide to the customer? What tools are required to create that experience? And then what's my role in it? And so Kubernetes, if you have a roadmap and you say, all I have is a bunch of VMs, and the team has told me that we need to now be able to deploy this app everywhere in the world because we now have promised our customers a 30 millisecond latency globally. Kubernetes only gets you so far. You gotta put one of those in every region where your customers are. You definitely gonna have to mix in CDN. Oh, Kubernetes is not a CDN. Right, you need another tool. So I think that roadmap says, we're here now. Our goal is to get this type of experience for our customers. I don't care what it is. You're an airline, you're a bank, you're an amusement park. There's an experience that you're going after. What tools do I need to contribute to that? And then your tool bit will get bigger. So then it'd be very explicit why we are adding Kubernetes. We're adding Kubernetes so we can have a common workflow between all these different cloud providers. We're adding this Tanzu layer because we would like a better workflow to be able to use those things that are underneath. It becomes super clear. When you have a recipe, you understand why you're going to the store, right? This is why some people say create a grocery list before you go to the grocery store to prevent you from putting unnecessary things in your cart. Cool. Well, I think that's all we have time for. I want to thank you for spending some time with us. And uh, that's it. Awesome. Thanks for having me.